Hello guys, welcome back. So today, um, we just finished up our tool set. So it's kind of a nice transition into this, which is also a tool set, uh, but this tool set has a very specific use case. So my wife and I, we travel quite a bit uh, when we can. And when we travel, we do carry on only. So, and I think a lot of people are on, are on track with that one bag travel, carry on only travel. I think it's becoming more popular um, as bag costs are skyrocketing. So one of the things though is as a, an EDC and multi-tool lever, there's not a whole lot of options um, that are full featured that allow you to carry on to an airplane. Uh, so you have to find a, a multi-tool that doesn't have implements totaling a length of seven inches and it can't have a knife. Um, I think the Gerber MP600 bladeless is one and then Leatherman has a couple of smaller uh, micras or uh, P the PS style, I think is what it is, um, that don't have a knife on it. But those those are like the coin pocket multi-tools and they're, they're not full featured. And the Gerber MP600, um, it's limited uh, in its use case. And so I, I went out, I set out to build my own little TSA friendly tool set. And that's what's in here. So this is actually just an in case uh, hard drive or case logic, sorry, case logic hard drive case. And you'll see a couple of things right off the bat. One, I've got a carabiner. Um, and two, I've got one of these little Sunto uh, compasses. So opening this up, Actually, there's a little thing on the outside too, but that's empty. I typically will use that for um, zip ties or something last minute. So opening this up, you'll see a couple of things. I'll kind of walk through these individually. So that's everything inside. It's a little padded, which is nice. Um, compass self-explanatory, carabiner, always nice. The first thing is I have a Stanley Power Lock uh, 10 foot. This thing used to sit in my pocket all the time. Um, it's flexible enough to do circumference stuff. 10 foot, super light. It's got a metal body, but it's like a cheap metal. Um, but it's been, it's been good. I've had this for many years. So I like to be able to measure stuff. Uh, the second thing is my little Knipex or Nipex, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these are their miniature Cobras. These things are tiny. <laughs> these things are so small. What are we looking at here? So we're looking at about nine inches. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> about four, <laughs> about four and a quarter inches or so, just over four inches. Um, so these things are very, very small and definitely TSA compliant. These are those tiny um, shears, medical shears. They claim that this will cut through a penny. I have not done it with these little guys, but I have done it with the bigger ones. Um, but these cut very well. And again, very, very small. You can palm that. Uh, nice to have scissors. These aren't the scissors that you'll use for, uh, you know, trimming your nails or anything. But cutting fabric, cutting rope, zip ties, all of that, without a knife, this is awesome. Um, you can cut through a ton of stuff with this. So I like to have a nice sturdy set of scissors. And these weigh nothing. I mean, they're so lightweight. The next thing is, so this is actually a sheath from an old comb. But I keep one of these little night eyes fish tools in there. So it's got a little bit of a scraper, pry bar, um, Sharp end, but not sharp, if that makes sense, for like rope cutting. Uh, and it's got a bottle opener there. I usually, I basically use this as a tiny screwdriver and a pry bar, a little pry bar, something to get under and pull. Um, never had an issue with this. So this little sharpened edge, and this is, this is quite sharp too. Again, it's sharpened, but not sharp. Um... So it's nice to have that. I just kind of put that in there so it's got a little home. This is probably the meat and potatoes of this uh, kit. So uh, this is the Steelman multi-tool or uh, screwdriver, folding screwdriver. And what I like about this is this folds out 
it kind of it doesn't lock but it's pretty stiff i mean you feel pretty confident with it and then i put one of these little magnetic bits in it comes with its own uh square kind of bit insert but it didn't the magnet on it was kind of horrible so i just added one of these um of my own and it, it works nicely it's a little bit more compact and the nice thing about this one is that you can put it on any standard screwdriver that if you need to cool thing about this is all these bits at the you know right inside you just kind of pull it out boom full-sized screwdriver very very nice it's got a pocket clip but i don't use it in a, as a pocket clip form sometimes i'll if i'm on on a trip i might carry this in my pocket but typically when i'm on a trip i'll have this in my day bag but i keep the pocket clip on there just in case um, if i needed a multi-tool i do not typically carry this in my pocket while i travel it will stay in this little kit and one other thing to note is i have been stopped for this before but that's because I kept the bits inside here. So typically when I travel, I'll take these bits out. And the reason that is, um, on the x-ray, this looks like a uh, pistol magazine with those bits in there. So typically I'll just take all the bits out and dump them in the bag and then carry it separate and they don't really question it. Um, but the one time I forgot to do that, I was stopped. Uh, and once they realized what it was, they were totally fine with it. They didn't take it. Um, but yeah, just be, just be cautious of that with those stacked like that. It does kind of look like a pistol magazine on their little x-ray machine. Um, so that is my kind of full featured, I guess, uh, TSA compliant toolkit. You have most of the stuff you would need as a handyman, um, small tinkering, tightening, loosening, all that stuff right here. Uh, the only thing that I was considering adding is a box cutter. And the reason I think about adding that is if you take the blade out, most TSA officers uh, won't have an issue with you going through on as a carry-on. But you've got to take the blade and all of the uh, backup blades, I guess, that kind of sometimes they fit in the handle. You've got to take those out. If you get caught with that, they'll take the whole thing. Um, but if you just take all the blades out and put it in your kit, you'll be, you'll probably be good. Um, I have not done that yet, so my experiences with this kit and i've had good luck with this kit um but i do think i'm going to try and add some type of small box cutter and just remove the blade uh, aside from that i i have been mucking with my electrical system i don't know if any of you guys are, are electricians out there but um maybe you can help me out so that's over on to uh, a quick question maybe the community can help i have a 15 amp breaker in my box and all of the the wire goes to through conduits in my concrete uh my concrete pad to the outside outlets one of my outlets is totally fine um, i use both voltage meter and everything i have a hot and a neutral i have no ground because in 1970 the ground was the actual box itself uh, and the metal conduit so i don't have an uh, external ground wire um, but it all works out I used the CGF or CFGI um, tester. Everything's fine. However, the one across my house, both leads are hot. And I cannot for the life of me figure out why. Uh, there's only four things on that breaker. And all four of them are the GCFI outlets. I have two outside and two inside. One in my downstairs bathroom, one in my upstairs bathroom. Typically, <clears throat> the G GCFI uh plug will tell you the error, but it's showing me that I have a, a hot and ground reversed, but I, since I don't have a ground wire, um, it's only, it's supposed to be a neutral and a hot, but both of them are getting 120 volts. If I use my voltage meter and touch the box to the hot wire, which I know is to be hot, which is purple, um, it gives me 120 volts. If I touch it to the box and the neutral wire, which is orange, which is supposed to be neutral, I still get 120 volts. I cannot for the life of me figure out why. This is causing all the GCFI plugs that I try and put there to not work. No, no outlet will work there. I cannot for the life of me figure it out. Um, I've rewired a bunch of my other, hold on, maybe I can show you. I've actually rewired a bunch of my other outlets 
to see if I could find um, loose neutrals somewhere in my house that might be triggering this. But all of this is feeding from the attic upstairs. But I know for a fact the conduit that runs to the outside are directly from the panel in conduit in my concrete. But I'm just testing everything. I literally have gone through every one of my outlets, pulled them out. I have swapped all of the old um, twist nuts with these uh, clips, these little clamp attachments. I have run all the wires instead of using the back insert ones. I've used, I've hooked them on the side. I've done it to all of my plugs and all of my outlets. And I cannot for the life of me figure out what is wrong with that outside outlet. Honestly, if any of you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I'm banging my head against the wall. So anyway, until next time, uh, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.